Okay, here we go. So today we are going to talk about the different functions of radar at top tier. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the different radar modes, uh, keybinds you'll need, uh, as well as we'll go into depth a little bit on uh, IRST and uh, some other stuff as well. Um, for you guys flying MiG-23s, uh, if you don't know about uh, the IRST mode, you're missing out on a lot of capability of the aircraft. But uh, for now, let's just start off with radar. Uh, let's go over some keybinds that you'll need. Uh, these are basically all of the keybinds you'll need if you want to make full use out of uh, your aircraft's radar, uh, no matter what tier you're at. Uh, all the way from, you know, 3.0 interceptors with continuous transmission all the way up to, uh, you know, the F-14. So, bare minimum, uh, you're going to want to have your uh, change radar IRST mode. You want to have uh, change radar IRST search mode. You're going to want to have lock radar IRST on target, and you want to have select IRST radar target to lock. So, while we're just sitting here in the carrier, if you look at the bottom right, you can obviously see your scope. Um, specifically in the uh, F-14, you have several different modes that uh, you may or may not know they do. So your standard search mode is going to be your search PD, search pulse Doppler. Uh, this is your standard search mode uh, that it's set on by default. It is basically just regular search radar with a pulse Doppler filter applied over it to filter out ground clutter. Um, this has advantages, distinct advantages. Uh, it allows you to look down towards the ground and still guide weapons in, um, but it also has some disadvantages and weaknesses as well that we'll get into when we're up in the air. Uh, also in the uh, F-14 you'll have the track while scan mode. Uh, you can cycle through these modes using the uh, change radar IRST mode control. Uh, track while scan allows your radar to put a pipper over multiple targets at a time uh, while not actually giving them any larger RWR warning that you're locking them. Um, the downside is that you cannot guide FOX-1 semi-active radar homing missiles while you're in this mode. Uh, you have to go into a single target track to guide those missiles. Uh, however, if you have the Phoenix is unlocked, uh, you can actually use the track while scan to guide multiple missiles to multiple different targets at the same time. Uh, so, after that, uh, you've got your search mode, uh, it's your standard, regular, unfiltered uh, radar retirements, and you can see that I'm sitting on the deck, you can see like right in front of me you have some bad clutter uh, where my radar is bouncing off the carrier deck in the water, uh, and it's giving me back a, a clouded return. So most of the time, you will be in pulse Doppler, but there are some advantages just to your standard search radar. Um, namely, that if you're looking straight up, the, your radar cannot be notched. If you don't have any ground returns that could possibly be coming your way, uh, they can't break your lock by flying into your radar's notch. And then you have your search pulse Doppler velocity scan. Um, to be totally honest, I'm not sure what the difference in North Thunder is uh, with this scan mode. Um, I generally just use regular Pulse Doppler. The Pulse Doppler Velocity Scan uh, in real life, I believe, was better at tracking rear aspect targets. I haven't been able to notice a difference in North Thunder. Okay, so we'll start off in Pulse Doppler mode. Um, the other controls that you can want to know is you have your change radar uh, search mode, I believe, controls. Let's see. So, yeah, change radar IRST search mode. That will allow you to set your scan azimuth. So, if you have a general idea of 
uh, where your target is, you can set it to be narrower, uh, which is useful because your scan will refresh over the target more often. So right now I'm scanning in the 20 degree by 3 degree, basically bore sight directly in front of my aircraft. Or you can set it to go all the way, uh, sit your full, scan, uh, your full scan azimuth. Uh, which is a slower scan. Uh, you're covering a lot more ground, but uh, your targets will not refresh as fast. And then you have to have your little ground, which is what I usually like to use. Um, let's see. And then you have your change radar scale, uh, scope scale. So if you have targets, your radar is always scanning out to its maximum range, uh, but you can filter out uh, different results based on how far you want to look. Uh, on your scale. So right now it's set to be at 37 kilometers uh, is the max range that a return will display onto my radar scope. I can make it go further, a lot further, uh, up to 370 kilometers, um, which is well beyond the lock range of the aircraft, but it can take a, uh, in ideal conditions, you can actually detect a large target that far. Not that any of the maps in War Thunder uh, are that large to begin with. Uh, and you can also set it to be shorter if you're close enough uh, to a target. It's I generally leave it at uh, 37 kilometers, and I use my next radar control that I'll talk about if things get closer. Uh, the next radar control is your... Uh, I have to look at these control names because I don't remember them offhand. I just know what my keybinds are. Uh, radar IRST Beyond slash within visual range combat modes. So... This is to activate your dogfight modes. The F-14, uh, most planes have one. Uh, the F-14 has two, you have your boresight mode. So anything within nine kilometers that flies inside this little square, this five by five degree square will automatically get locked. And then you have your vertical scan mode, which is a five degree wide by 40 degree vertical scan. Uh, and this is good for dogfights whenever you know, you're in a turning engagement with somebody, you can turn the scan mode on and you can lock somebody uh, that may be outside of your HUD and, you know, and then, then attempt to pull lead and uh, fire a uh, sidewinder at them. It's just a, a helpful mode to get an earlier lock from somebody who may not be in your HUD. Okay, uh, that's basically it for controls uh, that I can show you on the ground. So let's get up into the air. I'm gonna restart because I'm off uh, off center on this carrier. I don't want to crash. All right. So once we get into the air, I'm just going to show you some basic stuff. All right. So we'll just start off with the basics. Um, a little bit of something to, sh to that advantage, that I, the disadvantages I was telling you earlier about this pull stop. But you can see I'm looking directly at this MiG-15, but he's not showing up on my radar scope. That's because he's flying perpendicular to me uh, in what's called the notch. A pull stop of radar works by filtering out the relative speed of the ground coming towards you. Uh, that way you don't get any ground returns on your scope. But if a plane is moving at that same relative speed, uh, or, you know, going perpendicular to you, it will not come up on your return either. Uh, and you can see now that I'm behind him, I can spot him quite easily in my scope. Uh, and so I was talking about with that refresh speed, it's, uh, it's a lot slower whenever you're not looking directly at them. But, uh, yeah, so once the target carrot comes back up, notice that the F-14's radar is not particularly adept at locking stuff from behind. Once we get close enough, that wouldn't be an issue. So, the button you want to bind just for your standard everyday weapon lock is going to be So you can just hit the 
whatever key you want to set that to, and then you have a radar lock. Uh, if you wanted, you could guide radar guided missiles from this point. Um, or, you know, if you can also slay the Sidewinder Seeker head to that, uh, that point as well. Uh, but all this time, if the, that aircraft is uh, equipped with an RWR, they will be getting a lock tight in their cockpit. Which brings me to the next radar move that you can use, uh, which is trackball scan. So, as you see, when you enter trackball scan mode, your radar has this like segmented box over there, uh, overlaid over the target. From here, if I want, I can get a single target track and fill in, and I can guide my uh, I can guide my sparrows, or I can undo that lock, and I can actually I have a Phoenix missile. Uh, I can just fire that, and uh, it will guide using that. Not particularly well, considering Phoenix is. Uh, Two, the Phoenix is not very good. We can use it at much further ranges than, you know, three kilometers. But um, generally, that would be how you would use these Phoenix missiles. So you would sit here, uh, you know, 35 kilometers away and just cycle through your targets. So. So that's generally all of the radar uh, that I can show. So what we'll do is we can go back to the hangar and I will show you a little bit of IRST. So. The best plane to show you this uh, would definitely be the MiG-23 MLD. Um, the MiG-23s in general make very good use of IRST. Uh, they have the most advanced IRST uh, in the game. The Americans do have IRST on one plane that I know of, and that's the F-8E. However, it can't guide any of its weapons off of its IRST. It's just a search function. Uh, it allows you to keep an eye on a target um, without actually alerting them to your presence with a radar lock. The MiG-23, however, can 100% guide weapons in using IRST, and it is a very powerful uh, ability for these aircraft to launch very long range, very deadly missiles in the R-24Ts uh, without any warning to the enemy pilot. So we'll go ahead and take off. Uh, right here, you can see that I'm in my normal search scope, uh, search radar scope. Uh, once I get off the ground, I'll just show you that you can switch. Uh, so you have your normal, you have your MTI mode, which is basically uh, a very, very uh, rudimentary look down. Uh, style radar um, it, just for filtering out ground clutter, ground clutter it's not very it's not particularly good it gets fooled by chaff very easily um, so what we'll do is we'll gain a little separation just to show you how powerful this can be so but uh, what you'll do is you will use the switch between radar and the IRST controls. And that will look, make your screen look like this. And you can also change your scan azimuth for your IRST to make it more of a uh, pinpoint search. And you'll see, you don't get any ranging or front or foe information on this. It's just a return, so you can lock. And you can actually guide your IR missiles using this mode. So once you get a lock, 
from the R24. You can fire it from this mode, and it will start tracking. And all of this time, this F-86 would not, uh, even if it did have RWR, this particular aircraft does not, but if that was, say, an F-4E or an F-14, they would not be getting a radar warning uh, indicator. It was, that's just, I'm firing a heat seeker, and I'm not emitting any uh, radiation for that receiver to pick up. I'm just passively searching for heat signatures and locking onto them. Uh, it's a very, very powerful system, and uh, I'm sure most people that uh, have gotten the 23 know about it, but, you know, just in case some of you guys didn't. Uh, you can use it with uh, your R60s or your R24s. Uh, it's definitely stronger with the R24s, but it uh, it does allow you to get a quick lock with your R60s as well. All right, uh, that's about it. If anybody has any questions, just ask in the comments. Uh, I did this mainly for some of my friends, uh, but you know, it's the internet, so if anybody you know, watches this otherwise, feel free to ask in the comments.